It's the breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. As poor power and poor power supply persist in many parts of the country, the federal government has quietly removed all subsidy in the power sector with a plan to gradually end subsidies on petrol. Meanwhile, the federal government has said that it will grow Nigeria's power generation to 11,000 megawatts in 2022, saying measures to actualize this were already on ground. Currently, the country's power generation hovers around 4,000 megawatts and 5,000. Uh, we do have Muktak Mohammed, a financial analyst, join the conversation this morning. Muktak Mohammed, it's good to have you join us. Thank you so much. Good morning. Okay, so I, I, I'd like to share your thought. This has been a lot for Nigerians to, I mean, deal with at a time when we're talking about fuel subsidy. But the question is, uh, is it okay for us to talk about subsidizing the electricity sector when we don't even have constant power supply? Well, um, I think it's, it's, if, if, if you have power, no matter how little you have, and government is subsidizing for what you don't even have, is it not better off for them to not um, subsidize it at all so that we know that we, we, we pay for what we have based on based on the measure that government has put in place? I'm not an advocate of subsidy of any kind, uh, especially when it's not a subsidy that's going to end up um, gain, bringing more revenue to the table of government to be able to intervene, social inter intervention. Sir. Um, but when you tell me to choose between electric subsidy and petroleum subsidy, I'd rather go for electricity subsidy than petroleum subsidy because uh, electricity subsidy is going to touch every part of the world. It's going to touch every part, every, every part of Nigeria. Every Nigeria is going to benefit from it. So we don't do petroleum subsidy whereby once there's, um, there's Q, um, Q and uh, petroleum shortage of petroleum, there's Q or there's an incident on the road, the prices just jack up to about one hundred something percent. And it's the ordinary Nigerian that you think you're subsidizing for that are really suffering from it. But when you talk about electricity subsidy, I, for me, it's better to remove the subsidy in, in petroleum product and plunge it into electricity um, subsidy because that we could say we are really subsidizing because it's going to touch every Nigerian equally. Comparable to now that you have subsidy in the petroleum sector and you have about somebody driving up to three to four cars enjoying subsidy every day and somebody does not even have one car yet the subsidy is meant supposed to be meant for him and that person is not uh, uh, enjoying that subsidy because of scarcity of petroleum product because of insecurity or because of one thing that is not under his control so for me i i i think um it's a good thing that we are beginning to look at removing something because if you don't do that it will in turn become a monster just like the petroleum subsidy is a monster to us now but usually there's this argument where, um, for instance, now you talk about the petroleum sector and those who were saying, yes, it's okay for government to remove subsidy. But before government removes subsidy, the question would be, what has government done? The refineries are not functional. So it's, it's the same question with the power sector. Yes, we understand the issue that it's been privatized, not entirely. But um, if you say you're withdrawing subsidy, you're removing subsidy from the power sector, what is the state of the power sector in terms of generation and distribution? Well, there's no right time for anything. The right time is now. When it comes to economic policy, you don't get all the, all the parameters right before you decide to do it because definitely at the end of the day, you, you have to get it right for it to continue being what it is. So I, 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 I share what you're trying to say there. But then look at the petroleum subsidy. I keep using that as a heuristic. We have seen a, a, a situation whereby when, um, subsidy have been paid for over the years in terms of trillions. Like this year, we are expecting subsidy of about four trillion, and yet it's not going to rather it's going to worsen the life of the ordinary Nigeria than help the ordinary Nigeria. So if it's something that we need to do, I think we need to begin to act fast. You learn from your experience. It's only a fool that we say I want to learn from my mistakes. Everybody learns from the mistake of the, of the person before them or the mistake they have made to become a lesson to them and they want to make sure that they don't repeat that. And I'm sure that's what we are getting again. Because the subsidy in electricity is, um, uh, in the electricity that government paid, we don't even know the exact subsidy and who are you subsidizing and what are you subsidizing for. So the same thing that is happening in the petroleum sector is about to creep into the electricity sector, whereby this thing sort of subsidy is showed in a lot of controversy because you are not able to have a particular data to tie this subsidy scheme to. So the problem that we're having in the petroleum sector is the same problem we are getting in the electricity sector. It not was in the electricity sector because we don't even know the numbers. I mean, the number of people you are paying subsidy for, because according to the electricity bill, 
you are not supposed to pay subsidies for everybody. They are supposed to pay subsidy for people in a particular, maybe in the low income area. But how do you determine a low income area? So those are part of the um, strategies that have not really worked or the, 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 the blueprint that government has not been able to come up with. What are your thoughts on the um, the the finance minister, uh, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed? Um, we're all witnesses to the back and forth and let's call it policy somersault by this federal government uh, when this finance minister popped up at a function to say that the federal government was uh, removing fuel subsidy and then that there would be um, sort of a, a, a give back money shared to the poorest Nigerians to cushion the effect which was in turn going to be more than the federal government was spending for fuel subsidy and now we, we heard later that the um, president um, may not have said anything like that from the Senate president. He said President Moray could not have done that. And then later we heard that they were not going ahead with that. And even the, the, the whole plan to give the most vulnerable or poorest Nigerians uh, transportation, it, it didn't look sustainable because they were going to give this money every month. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on Mrs. Zainab Ahmed and the statement she puts out? And, um, you, know, uh, you know, the credibility of of this federal government as far as that sector called finance and economy is concerned? I think you, you said it all. We talk about governance uh, in Nigeria going through political summers, I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, policy somersault. And that has been one debate whereby you don't have attract foreign investors into Nigeria because they don't have confidence in the system. They say that a government, government is supposed to be a continuous process, but in Nigeria, it doesn't. And again, it shows that there's no synergy where the finance minister is saying this, and then before you know it, the, the, the presidency is saying something. And that has been the problem with the current administration. It has been an administration that has been involved in double talk. The minister says this, the presidency dis disputed and said this is not what we meant. Look, the subsidy scheme has been proposed by the minister who removed our subsidy was good, but then you added it that you want to pay um, um, some Nigerian 5,000 5, naira every month for the next one year. The subsidy at that time was 3 trillion, and you are going to spend 2.5 trillion paying 500 naira to Nigeria. And when you talk about the poor, who are the poor in Nigeria? How do you determine who is the poor? What is the data that makes you to determine who is the poor? So as long as we have challenges in terms of data, we don't even know how many Nigerians we are. And we, I just say we are above 200 million. We don't even know how many because we last this population census over 20 years ago. So we need to update our data. It's when you start working with data that some of these economists that you are trying to put from makes sense. As it stands, it doesn't make sense. Even the current thing we are in, that are going to pay four, four trillion for subsidy. And we ask, on, at which price will we pay four trillion? If you say we are paying four trillion because the price of crude at, at a particular time was $110 or $120, when it goes to $80, when it goes to $70, are we still paying the same amount of subsidy that we are paying before? So this, and you cannot do, up to this moment, Nigeria cannot even maximize their. OPEC output of 1.8 million. We are doing 1.5 billion. So there's a lot of challenges, and these challenges are structural challenges. And those are not administrative, they are structural. And once you have these structural challenges, it takes somebody to come there to want to build an institution to begin to help us. And that's why the uh, petroleum industry bill would have been one of the best things that would have happened to kickstart the petroleum sector to attract um, but they also did not have the political will to go about it and you are you and i know why they don't have the political will it's not because it will not be done it's because it's an election year and that could be one of the reasons why they said suspend this policy for now pass it back to the new administration to come and see how they can sort it out because they will have four years to do that hmm. so so when you hear in 2023 um that the finance minister is saying we just one year to go that they will be removing petrol subsidy in phases and doesn't give uh, a timeline for that phase, uh, you know, specific timeline, like you said, you know, data to back it, you know, figures, you know, because finance is about numbers to show what exactly she means by phases. Um, what, what does that say? That says to you and I that they don't have our interest after the election. Once they 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 they, 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 they whatever who, whatever candidate they are supporting wins that election, they can decide to say, look, we are we, we are leaving, so we can remove the subsidy. Let the next government that is coming begin to deal with a crisis of subsidy removal. Remember that 
the same thing the previous government of President Goodluck in Billy Jonathan wanted to do also. At the time they were going, they wanted to hide the files of petroleum product, let the incoming administration come to deal with it. But the people um, uh, rise up against it. But even when this incoming administration came in, they were able to even increase the price. But remember that this is the only administration that increased fuel price more in terms of percentage. In terms of potency, they met the fuel at, at the time they came in. They met fuel at, 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 I think, at that time, about maybe barely 70 to 80 naira uh, <laughs> per liter. But today, yeah. yeah, we are 160, and they have been yeah. proposing 320, 400 without any sustainable data to mark up. That's the challenge. You are paying four trillion. Remember, this administration at a point told us that they were not paying subsidy again. They were only for NPC to call it under recovery. So they brought in a lot of names to to to, to say, you know, we are not paying subsidy. We don't believe in the subsidy. You know, this conversation before he came in, the president, then a, a presidential candidate said that there is nothing like subsidy. That subsidy is a fraud. And then you came in there now. You are the one perpetrating the fraud. Okay, so um, w what would you say the implication is if the government says that they're removing or they have removed subsidy for uh, in the power sector or the electricity sector, however you want to put it, what does that mean for Nigerians? They have removed it. If you are buying, if you are buying credit, you realize that the amount you used to buy before, the unit they give to you have come down. They have done that already. So when the minister said that we have removed electricity subsidy quietly, he didn't say we will remove. It has been removed. Hmm. Uh, and, and, and this is coming in a time when, you know, the nation is grappling with uh, um, power challenges. You know, the, of course, the uh, transmission company of Nigeria recently had to come out to defend itself to say that the report say that we are responsible for the current load shedding in the country is not true. We're not just generating enough electricity. We can only transmit to the distribution companies what we get from the generation uh, companies. So, so um, isn't it bizarre that this is all coming at a time when we don't even have uh, electricity? You know, a lot of parts of Nigeria are without power supply as we speak. You, you don't need to even go far. A lot of places in Lagos, even very close to you there, and I, I'll be surprised if you too, you are not using generating plant there right there, and you're still to be on air. So it, it's right beside us there. You, you see, the government does not have the political will to do the right thing, and that's why we are where we are. No government has come out to have the political will to deal with the past situation. Until we have a government that have the political way to deal with the power situation, to deal with the petroleum sector, and then we'll have the kind of peace that we intend to generate to the prosperity. Because when you look at the petroleum sector, it's the life wire, it's the life wire, it's the blood of the Nigerian economy. It's the one that generated the most revenue for the Nigerian economy. And it's one of those uh, uh, sectors that is engaged in a lot of corruption. So you can see that we are not only talking about corruption, we are talking about oil thieves also in that sector. So when you look at the electricity sector, if we don't do the right thing, we end up, what is government still doing with generation? Why is government still involved in generation? Why do you privatize? If you want to privatize, privatize everything. And make sure you give it to a competent hand. Let you begin to earn revenue tax from there. After all, government is not going to legalize it. Government is going to have a share. That's all what other, every government all over the world does. And they are not involved in the day-to-day -day. So What they have done, they have reduced costs. And rather, what they will then be getting, you know, be getting dividends. And the people will tend to be the ones that will benefit more. So when you talk about generation, they talk about, they say they have generated, sometimes they say they generate up to 7,000 megawatts, but they can only transmit less than 6,000 megawatts. And what is the challenge with it? The challenge is that even the GICO or the GICO, whatever they call themselves, will not be able to transmit because of oscillate power, uh, oscillate power equipment. So it, because they didn't, they didn't have the technical know-how they to begin to know that, look, when you are buying such a uh, you need to transform. Mokhtar so they didn't Mohammed. do that. Uh, I'm really sorry. We have to let you go now. Uh, that's because we're really out of time and we have been prompted to, uh, you know, to let it go at this point in time. Thank you so much. And we're hoping that the government and everyone, stakeholders, will step into uh, the right shoes and position to take the right decision so, you know, we can uh, be a nation that is leaked. Uh, that's the most important thing. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, that's the size of it. Uh, you cannot take out the importance of having, you know, the uh, talking about energy or power supply for any economy. It will really, really translate 
uh, to ensuring that this development, a lot will happen. It would make the business, running business in Nigeria, uh, very, very, very easy and simple. But that's it. That's the size of the conversation this morning. If you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. I am Messi Boku. Do have a fantastic day. And a happy birthday once again from all of us here, the team uh, on and off air to you. Mercy, my name is Kofi Bartels. Keep watching Plus TV Africa. The Breakfast will return tomorrow.